Okay, hi and welcome everyone from Barcelona. I hope you hear me well. Before starting with the masterclass, I want to thank you everyone for joining us and also let you know that by the end of this session, we'll give you some minutes to ask questions, solve doubts and chat directly with Mireya. You can connect your camera and microphone or ask them in the chat and we'll solve any questions you may have. My name is Idoya and I work here at Lavasat. We are about to start this masterclass about four tips to build your personal brand as a creative. And today we have Mireya Martin with us, who is an instructor in the Spanish online masters in art direction in communication and in new documentary photography, as well as the founder of the Iconista agency. But first, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about our school for those who don't know Lavasat yet. We are the, online, the only exclusively online design school that has a 100% live format. This gives students an in-person experience in an online format. This is how we guarantee such a unique, high-quality learning experience. Here are some key stats about Lavasat. 90% of our students recommend Lavasat. More than 3,000 students have studied with us. We count with more than 250 instructors who are professional currently working in their field. And we have students from all around the world, such as Germany, the United States, Spain, Italy, Mexico, Mexico and so on. La Basad was recently featured in an article on It's Night nice That, which you can check out on their site. What are the benefits of studying at La Basad? All our instructors are currently working in the profession and they come from different parts of the world. We accompany our students throughout the program so they are never alone in their experience. Students can access different opportunities such as workshops, master classes, group follow up sessions, participation in awards, Lavasat Live, networking, and much more. The next call for the application starts in October, November 2023. And if you want to get more information, you can send an email to info at lavasat.com. Additionally, you can get in touch with us by email, phone, or throughout our socials, where you can see projects by the professors, Lavasat students, and other news. And now I introduce you to Mireya Martin. Afterwards, as I already mentioned, you can ask any questions you might have in the chat or by activating your microphone and camera. So don't be shy. Mireya, it's your turn. Well, hello everyone. Thanks, Idoya, for your great introduction. And welcome to this Lavasat Masterclass under the title, Four Tips to Build Your Personal Brand as a Creative. First, I'm going to share my presentation so you can follow the document. Let me check where I can find it. I think it's here, Idoya. Let me check. Yeah, this one. Please. Can you confirm everyone you can see properly the doc I'm sharing? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Perfect. So let's start. Well, um, here you will have the contents we are going to see today. Uh, well, we will start with an introduction of myself, but also, uh, well, to set the focus and objective of this masterclass which is to help you guys building your brand as a creative. And we are going to go through four key tips that you can apply right now to your brand. It is a speech to really aims to empower all of you. And I really want to encourage you guys to show yourself to others. I believe that every artist has the potential to inspire other people. And well, as Idoya said, at the end of the speech, we will have time for questions and apps. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Mireya Martin. I work in advertising. I'm publicist. I'm mom of two kids. I'm a very intense traveler and I'm a daily yogi practitioner. Well, I do yoga every day. I live between Barcelona. I'm from Barcelona, but I live between Barcelona and Bali, Indonesia. Uh, well, I'm a brand strategist for more than 20 years and with a strong specialization in personal branding. 
I'm the founder of a company called Iconista. And since 2011, I run my own company, the Icon Building Agency. And my mission is to help people and brands to become icons. This, is, this means to make them unique and turn them into references that inspire other people. I'm, as you can see, a teacher, but I am also a student. I love learning. This is why I'm always learning or studying something new. And I've been a teacher for about 12 years. I've been part of Lavasat team since the very beginning. I think I'm one of the first teachers here in the university. OK, what about my background? Well, um, my background comes from big creative international agencies, but also brand building, brand building consultancies. I started my career in Grey. Grey is a well, big creative agency. I was in the company uh, based in Barcelona. Uh, well, this was my first job. After uh, two, three years, I moved to BBDO, which is another big creative agency, and my third work was in DDB, DDB Barcelona, where I was working for companies like Volkswagen or Audi. Uh, at that moment, I decided to move abroad. I wanted to go to London, where, well, planning is very important. And I moved to a company uh, called Elephants Can Jump, which is a brand building consultancy. And well, I consider Elephants as my main school. And well, I think I learned a lot in that company during this, well, four years experience in London. After four years living in London, and a little bit tired about not to have the sun close to me every day, as I'm from Barcelona, I moved back to Barcelona and I went to work in Cantar. Cantar is a very big also brand building consultancy. And my last job in big creative agency was in YNR, Young and Rubicon Barcelona. And well, as you can see, this was like my big uh, years in advertising industry. I had the, well, the opportunity of working with very big brands as, for example, Danone, BBVA, P&G, Coca-Cola, Unilever, Levis, PepsiCo. Well, a lot of brands. If you go to my LinkedIn and you look for me, you will see there all the experience I have, which is, well, quite a lot. After these years, in 2011, I create my own company, uh, Iconista, that is really focused on working uh, branding, but for people. So I am a specialist of personal branding. I've been working with, well, so many clients also, a lot of people from the sports industry. I've been working with so many players in Football Club Barcelona, in Barca, basically. Also, people from tennis, golf, other Olympic games, fashion, music, corporate, politics. If you go to my website, that is www.theiconista.com, you can see also more of the stuff we normally do. But now, let's focus on the most important thing that is about these four tips to build your personal brand as a creative. Yeah? Well, let me start with these four tips, no? because what is a tip? A tip is a piece of advice, is an opinion that someone gives or receives on a particular subject. So please remember this. These are tips, not a truth that has to be 100% followed. So I invite you to question everything I will say today. So never take anything for granted without checking it by yourself. And I have to recognize that when it comes to oneself, it's really difficult to work on personal branding. Why? Because we all have insecurities about yourself and personal branding is about promoting yourself or be, be shown. So always these insecurities come out. In this case, it's me from my personal experience of so many years who come today to share with you some knowledge that I believe it will be like a great value for you guys, but also to, yeah, to give you the potential to change the way you are showing yourself as an artist or as a designer, wherever you are. Okay, so please question everything I will tell today. Okay, let's focus to the second part of this title, 
to build your personal brand, yeah? And I would like to share with you this quote of Philip Kotler, which, well, is considered one of the fathers of marketing that says, if you are not a brand, you will become a, com a commodity. What does it mean? This means that if you don't become someone who brings value, you end up competing on price, which I think is the worst situation because that happens when people cannot see the real value you can add to the projects or to their brands. And what is important is don't, don't confuse these two terms. One is personal brand and the second one is personal branding. Personal brand is the mark we live as a person, how we will be remembered. Personal branding has this verb branding used in marketing to refer of the fact on building a brand image. Personal branding then is the process of construction of this personal brand, of this person image. Personal branding is how we manage and build a personal brand. Is the process, the method, the tools. It's the set of skills that a person has announced and developed to be able to differentiate in a market full of competition. But it's not easy because there are many of us and you have to earn your own space. Another important thing I want to share is personal branding is not just for those people who want to be freelance is also useful for people who want to find their ideal job or maybe they want to create their own company. Okay, but what this all comes from? Well, I want to share with you this cover of Fast Company that was published, uh, published in 1997 announcing Tom Peters with this first article called The Brand Called You. In 2006, the magazine Time published this cover where the word you was the main character of the year. And if you want to go deeper, you can also check this book, The Brand Called You by Peter Montoya, which I think is one of the most important in, in personal branding. Although this definition of Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, seems to me Another way to really explain it, your brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. Imagine you are in a meeting, you need to go to the toilet, you stop, you leave the room, and the people at the meeting start speaking about you. What they say is very related to your personal brand. Yeah? Okay, why this is so important, personal branding? Well, I think because things have changed a lot in the last years. I think, uh, well, we have changed era. We have say goodbye to the industrial era and we have welcomed the era of knowledge. So the university degree before, it was the only thing we need to find a job, for example. But today, this is not enough. Of course, we still need to study and more than ever because things change very fast. But it is very important to really work on our personal branding to make sure we show ourselves the way we really want. We also have to say goodbye to the CV, to the curriculum vitae, it's not enough. Now, the most important thing is to focus on your passion, really know what you really love to do and what are your talents. Another important thing is that, yes, today we don't have a work for all life, like our parents or grandparents had. Our professional life is changing a lot. And I think this employee mindset is something of the past and we have to welcome an attitude of, yeah, being an entrepreneur. And the last but not least is saying goodbye to individualism. It's not to do things just because of us. Do things thinking of the common good, how you are going to add value to the rest of the people. Besides this, I also think that, well, internet has changed things a lot. And of course, we have so many digital tools today that can help us. So we have like two sides, no? In one hand, everything is more challenging because we have a lot of competition and everyone is showing up. But in the other side, we have a great opportunity 
because, well, each of us can be a brand. And also, it's important to consider that people are more credible than brands. For example, think about when you organize a trip, yeah? And you are, for example, looking uh, for a hotel in bookings. You believe more the reviews of the consumer, other people that have been in that hotel, than the text that the hotel has been written, yeah? Or, for example, when you look for a restaurant and you really trust TripAdvisor because, you know, it has been made by other people like you. So be mind, so keep in mind that people are more credible than brands. And for example, if you think of LinkedIn, LinkedIn give more preference, the algorithm give more preference to people than companies. So yes, people are really powerful today. And I want to share a story with you, very well, unique story that happens to us in Iconista. Some years ago, we were building our agency physical agency in Barcelona. We create a very nice space. And well, this left picture is a picture of our meeting room. We bought these, well, some decorations because we wanted to do the shooting of the agency. And we bought this paper craft bag, which is super cheap. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, 20 centimes of euro, very, very cheap. And we also bought these golden letters and we were creating like nice sentences in these paper bags. Well, we did it. We did the shooting. And well, I upload the shooting in Pinterest. If you go to Pinterest and you look for Iconista, you can see that picture. It was funny because I did it. Well, OK, like I'm going to share this. And some months later, I received an email from the Royal House of Norwegian. It was from a woman that, well, it was the assistant of Metemari, the princess of Norwegian, saying us that the princess fell in love with our bags. And she wanted to collaborate with Iconista to prepare all Christmas presents using this concept. Imagine how a picture can give you, can bring you to this huge opportunity of being working with the Royal House of Norwegian. I remember myself, I was having doubts about if it makes sense to upload, upload things in Instagram or Pinterest from that day. I really saw the importance to show everything you do. Let's see also the benefits of personal branding. Why this is important? Well, to me, Personal branding will give you identification. So to be identified by what you want to be identified with. Second, it will give you recognition to be recognized at a professional level. Third, it will give you opportunities, but the real opportunities you really want, not opportunities you don't want. If you really show how you are, you will attract the ideal clients. And last but not least, the self-realization. You will feel better about yourself and more fulfilled. You will, say, yeah, you will feel safer about your personal profile. Think about, for example, the day you die. I, it sounds ugly, I know, but it will come for, for all of us. How do you want to be remembered? Because this is also about personal branding what mark you want to leave in this world. Let's focus now on the last part of the sentence, as a creative, yeah? Because what is creativity? Creativity, if we look for this creativity definition, is the ability to produce or use original and, and unusual ideas. Creativity is not a talent. It's a way of operating. It's a way of doing things. And nowadays, we all have to be creative. In fact, creativity is what differentiates us from artificial intelligence. Yeah? But the truth is that today, we want to focus on creative professions. Yeah? So those of, well, all of us that belong to Labasat normally are creative professions. 
here what some of you may be you are photographers you are graphic designers interactive designers maybe illustrators communicators interior designers product designers audiovisual people and even more for sure but i'm also i also can imagine that most of you you don't feel attracted to the idea of auto promotion it's like well it's something that everyone knows we have to do but no one wants to do it yeah and also i really love this sentence that a lot of artists say sometimes no i don't need to promote myself because my work speaks for itself but the truth is that it doesn't we really need to show up people want to know more about the people behind things they want to understand how works have been made and why have been made yeah okay let's focus them on the most important part the tips yeah i have four tips and i'm going to explain one by one to make sure you really uh, well you can really apply them from today or tomorrow first tip you don't need to be a genius you need to be yourself because everything else is already taken if we have to wait to be a genius to paint something guys it will never happen no as charles chaplin was saying that's all any of us are amateurs we don't live long enough to be anything else what is an amateur an amateur is an enthusiast who regardless of money or fame wants to do something is someone who is not afraid of making mistakes or looking ridiculous in front of others i love this sentence also from paul arden it says fail fail again and fail better from every mistake you seek to learn and honestly the world is changing super fast so that turns all of us into amateurs we will always be amateurs we will never be a genius but the most important thing to me guys is about authenticity yeah and this sentence to me is really important be yourself and nothing else so you really must focus on be yourself if you think about it each person is unique and if we are true to our essence we become unique brands it, you just need to be yourself another important point of course is to do things as best as you can so be your best best version but what is important because this is not that easy to be able to be yourself you really need to know yourself and it's important to know who you are what is your true essence and what you really want because also i think it's super super key to free yourself from any family or social pressure you might have received to throw into this pool called self knowledge well self knowledge at the end if i think about it it's a very complete process it's a very deep proce process and a detailed study of the person you will discover strong points of yourself but also weak points of yourself but the most important thing is to really find what makes you unique can you hear me properly let me read the chat hold on no it's all clear they are just asking if we're gonna share the slides but we already wow. solved that question don't worry <laughs> okay 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 because i'm not breathing you know and I yeah, no, like, don't okay. worry just keep going <laughs> thank you okay let's move to tip number two resign and define yourself well yeah exactly this one what is the point here so i have to tell you marketing is an exercise of choosing like life itself you can have it all you really need to choose you have to know what you really are and what you really want and leave everything else behind so also it's important to learn how to say no and i love that sentence that say 
you when you say no to others so many times you are saying yes to yourself so bear that in mind because it's important to give yourself aligned with what you really want to attract at this point it is important to learn three key concepts first one is about brand purpose yeah Brand Purpose is a concept that was created by Simon Sine that to me, well, to me and so many brands will think the same, has changed the way we build brands. The purpose, the brand purpose is the deepest reason why you do what you do. It's why you wake up every morning, what really thrives you. It's your cause, it's your belief, yeah? Your why never changes. It's something that very rarely changes. Maybe if you do a very big shift in your life, it can change. But normally, it's something that stays there. So how Simon Sinek says, he say, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And here in the screen, you can see his way, way of explaining it, the golden circle, where you have why in the center is the most important thing, followed by the how and followed by the what. And also always by this order, yeah? So brands have to be built from the why. Let's start for the easy part. What, what do you do? What the hell you do? I think that every person, every company, every organization know what it does. How, how you do what you do. Some companies, some people, some brands know how they do things. These are like values or principles that define how you do things. Why? Why you do what you do? Very few people and companies know what, why they do what they, what they do. Because most brands just focus on the what and the how. And that why, that vision, of what you want to be is the most valuable thing you have. It's your compass to succeed. To succeed, sorry. Without having a goal, it's very difficult to score. So why thrives everything? And I want to recommend you also this couple of books. One is Find Your Why, of course, by Simon Sinek. And there is a, this second, which is quite similar but different, called The Element, written by Ken Robinson. Let's move to the second important concept, brand positioning. In this case, we refer to how we want to position our brand, our personal brand, in people's mind. All strong brands have managed to capitalize on a consistent concept in people's mind. They occupy a space with a clear idea, with a unique idea, just one idea. This is what we call brand positioning. If, for example, I say Coca-Cola, what positioning do you think Coca-Cola has? What is space that does Coca-Cola occupies in your mind? What concept define Coca-Cola? Because Coca-Cola has managed to really occupy a very huge concept, happiness. Coca-Cola means happiness. If, for example, we so, I don't know, to another brand like Volvo in the car industry. What is Volvo about? Volvo has focus on safety. So as you can see, big brands focus on one concept, very big concept, which is relevant to that people. And they always stay in that concept. Yeah. This uh, positioning concept was uh, explained uh, and created by All Rise and Jack True. And I also want to recommend this positioning book, which is very old, but very relevant to really understand better this concept of positioning. Let's move to the third key concept, that is your voice. And what I mean here is not about what you say, but how you say it, yeah? And it has a lot of relation of with your personality because personal brands must also define 
their personality. Just like people, no? Personality is like a set of human characteristics around a brand, associated with a brand. There are many tools to work on brand personality, but I would like to share with you guys the Jung archetypes. No? Carl Jung was a psychologist who defined 12 different brand archetypes that we used a lot to uh, define brands and, of course, personal brands. Depending on the archetype we chose, we define ourselves. Our voice will be in one way or another. I'm going to go through all of them starting, uh, well, for example, by the innocent, no? Innocent, where you can see here Nintendo as an example. Innocent are optimistic brands that transmit honesty, trust, re reliability. They are brands that always try to generate well-being to, to others. Nintendo is a good example. Coca-Cola, for example, is an innocent. The second one where you see Rolex is the ruler. This archetype represents premium brands whose public normally has a high socio-economical status and they are, yes, like the very best, the, the one who puts the rules in the category. Rolex, for example, is a ruler. Mercedes in cars is a ruler or IBM, it's also a ruler. Let's move to the third one, also in yellow color, the sage. Sage are brands that believe on the importance of knowledge and analysis of the information to understand the world. We have, for example, TED, that is a sage, of course, HP, Google, CNN. These are all examples of sage. Let's move now to the red area. The red area, we have the magician, we have the hero, and we have the creator. The magician, the magician is someone who turns one thing into another, yeah? These are imaginative, charismatic, and very inspiring brands. They transmit a lot of self-confidence. Tesla is a very good example of magician. Axe or Absolute is also, a, yeah, are very good examples of also of magician. Let's move to hero. Hero are brands that represent effort, honor, victory, and involvement. They have a very winning attitude and a spirit. Nike is a very good example of a hero. I would say maybe also Duracell or, for example, um, how I, it was called Invictus of Paco Rabanne. It was also a great example. Let's move now to the third one, which is a creator. No? Creator, it's about innovative brands that are always one step ahead. They are the ones who help or give the users the possibility of creating. But they also offer the products in a very original way. So people can really adapt the products to themselves. Apple is a creator. Lego is another good example of creator. Let's move now to the blue where we see the Explorer, the Outlaw, and the Jester. Okay, about the Explorer. Explorer are brands with a personality that is very authentic, free, bold, independent, and daring. Lonely Planet is an Explorer, of course. Jeep, Red Bull, North Face, these are all Explorers. If we move now to the Outlaw, Outlaw at the end are brands who break the rules, who, yeah, defy like the status quo as they really want to give a different way of doing things. We have, for example, here, Harley Davidson, DSL, or Desi One. And also the Jester, this is an archetype embodied by fresh and comical brands that show fun and a carefree attitude. All the Spice is a good example, Fanta is another good example, Oreo, the Biscuits, or Rio, is a very good example. And if we move to the last part, the green ones, we see the lover. Lover are brands that are very passionate, are seductive brands. They transmit a lot of enthusiasm and desire to please. In other words, they encourage people to live life with passion 
and enthusiasm. Dior is a very good example of lover. Also Martini or Magnum, the ice creams, are a good example. Caregiver, these are brands that are very protective and very paternalistic. They really care about others. UNICEF is a very good example. Volvo, if I come back to the same example, is a very good example also, or Danone. And the last archetype is called every man. And these are like, well, the regular brands, brands that they don't want to show ostentation, they don't want to show off, but seek connection through empathy. IKEA, for example, to me is a very good example, eBay or SEAT, the Spanish brand of cars. So remember, it's not what you say, it's how you say it through which brand personality you will express yourself. Let's move to tip number three. Be findable because it's the only way some will, someone will find you. And I love, well, Brené Brown, which is a very, very good inspiration for me, that she said, for the connection to happen, we have to let ourselves to be seen to be seen as we really are. So we really need to be authentic, as I was telling you before, but we have to show ourselves to be shown. If not, it's very difficult that people can find us. And I think here, we really need to take advantage of social media. I know it's uh, demanding, I know it's a lot of work, but it's a great opportunity because at the end, social media is like networking, but in an exponential format because it's where the people are and that's where people can find us. And it's important to choose the right social network for each person. So imagine, film people will choose YouTube or Vimeo. People in the business or corporate Normally, they use LinkedIn. Readers, normally, they love Twitter. Designers or visual artists, likely to be using Instagram or Pinterest. Maybe some of them TikTok. I would say, choose one, but you must be there. And my advice also is, it's better to do one social network properly done than to try to do so many and well, not being consistent or maybe, yeah, show one day and disappear the following day. And I would say from social media where you will be creating content, make sure you bring people to your own platforms. And I mean your website, your portfolio, your blog, your e-commerce, wherever you want to use. So you will use your website where when you really want to yeah give all the information about you and also you want to show and share your portfolio maybe you will choose blog in the case you want to share valuable content that really attracts people to your brand or maybe you will choose an e-commerce if you want to sell finished products or maybe info products or yeah any physical or yeah even physical product i would say but now imagine, stop for a moment and imagine that your next boss don't need to read your CV because he is already a reader of your blog. Imagine that he's already there or that you are a student and you get your first job because you have published one of your university projects. Imagine that you get fired of your work of your job but you already have a social network of close people willing to help you yeah so trust me it's really worth it tip number four don't self-promote please and don't spam and this is very important don't make your own shopping channel it's better to bring value to people and remember Internet is like a printer. Everything you post becomes public material. I would say a very important way of doing this is think about the process, not the product, and share something small every day. 
Another important way of doing things is in social media is telling stories. Tell good stories. Things, for example, of children's stories. They all have a structure. Apply it to what you want to tell. And your stories will be better with practice. At the beginning, it's very difficult. But the more times you tell them, the better they are. I would say also share your learnings. What you have to do is basically show your work. Or for example, show what you like and then people who like the same, they will find you. It's about, I think, learning to share. What inspires you? What do you read? What do you subscribe to? What website do you visit? What music do you listen? What films do you watch? What work do you admire? Whose ideas do you steal? Share your personal secrets. They can be references, drawings, blueprints, sketches, interviews, audios, photos, videos, plans, drafts, models, trial versions, maybe a diagram, notes, inspiration, cuts, stories, collections, wherever, but share. And I would say also, don't show all of this. People, they don't really want to see your dog, your cat, your baby, your selfie, your breakfast, your latte, the sunset. They are following you because of your work. So I would say focus on bringing value on your work. Yeah. And I love this quote of Paul Arden of Sachi and Sachi that says, do not seek praise, seek criticism. Get people to react, take part of your brand. And if they comment, please answer, because also what is really bad is when people do a lot of effort, like posting content, but they never reply to a comment or, yeah, or to a like, yeah? And last but not least, don't be spam. There is a big difference between sharing and oversharing. Always ask yourself, can it be really helpful? It's interesting. It is something I would be uncomfortable if my mother or my boss see it. Don't be a pain. And above all, don't make people waste their time, which is very valuable. And I would end, would like to end with this quote of Salvador Dali that says, let them speak bad or good, bad or good about me, but let them speak. Yeah, because the most important is that people speak about you. This means that you are visible, that they are finding you, and you are showing you to the rest of the world. And I think, well, that's all. Now we are going to give space to dabs, to questions. But remember, do things and dab less. Thank you very much.